Hello, and welcome to our demonstration series on the Foglight API. The Foglight API is new. It came out with version 575.7 of the Foglight management server, but you can also download a cartridge for the Foglight API and use it in any 575 version. Now, the way to tell if the API is installed is if you go to your Foglight server and just put API doc at the end, you should come back with this documentation set. If nothing comes back there, that means you don't have the cartridge installed. So that's a real quick way to check. And like I said, if you don't have it installed, you can go to support link and get it. Now let's have a, just a quick look through some of the documentation. So one of the things we'll look at today is login. And um, we'll go through this in the basic series, which is this video. And then I'll go through a more advanced topic where we'll use the login a little bit differently um, in that advanced topic that we go through in the second video. So login will let you pass in either a username, password, or an auth token. After you get your, your token out, after you get what you need and you validate, you can go ahead and pull alarm data, you can pull cartridge data, registry information, anything about any of your topologies you have, and um, even observation queries. So you can say, get me the memory from a host, for example. So this is all information that's available through that API documentation. Now what I want to take you do, through is I want to quickly get you to a point where you can run some of these calls, try them out, and see what comes back. And the best way to do that is to go ahead and download what we call Postman. So Postman, if I control click here, it's going to bring me in. And Postman will let you download either uh, Windows or Linux. And I got 64-bit on mine. And then you have a, an application on your desktop called Postman. Now, inside of here, I also have a link here that says this is a document. This is a collection of, from Postman. This is a collection that, um, that we have for Foglight. So if you copy this link, and I'll show you where to import that into Postman, you'll be able to get all of the calls pre-formatted so you don't have to write them all individually when you're testing them. So let's go ahead and jump right into my Postman. I'll show you some examples. Now, as we move on, there's some, I, I put a couple other links up here that are blogs on, on how to use some of the calls inside code. So it'll actually show you the code and there's some Python examples, some Java examples. And I'm gonna go through a pretty detailed Java example in this second video as well. So that'll add to this list. Right, so let's go ahead and jump over to Postman. Now, when you first get Postman, you're not gonna have any of this information here. These are all of the ones from the Foglight set that I showed you the URL was for. But all you have to do to get those is you go up to File and Import, and you're gonna import from the link, and then you're gonna paste that link that I gave you. That, that will bring in all of these calls for you so that they're all pre-formatted, which is really cool because it would take a long, long time to copy all this over by just looking at our documentation that we looked at earlier. So I'd have to basically go create all these but all of these are created for you in that Postman set. Now, the first thing I want to take a look at is account login. And, and all the URLs you'll see are set up. They have these global variables in here or variables that you can use. So mine are all set up. My server URL is 10.148.13. My port is 80.80. And then my path is API v1. Now, the way I set those up is I set them up. You can either do them locally as an environment or you can do them globally. Now, in my case, I'm going to use the same Foglight management server. So I put it in as global variables. So my server URL is here, and then it's going to resolve it underneath in all those calls. My port. Um, so you, you will have to go in when you initially start and tell us where your Foglight server is and what your port is. And the API path is going to be the same for all of us. So it's going to be API v1. And I'll talk a little bit about this auth token. All right, so now I have everything in, and I want to go ahead and I want to run this call with this server. So now I'm going to hit my server, and if I say send, it's going to say my token is invalid. So if you remember from earlier, we said we can either put in a, we have the option to either put in a username password, uh, or we can send an auth token to Foglight. So what I'm doing is I'm sending an auth token in for the Foglight username password combination. And that's not working right now because my token's invalidated. And I purposely did that so I could show you where to get a token. So if we go back to my Foglight server, and I'm gonna show you two, th two quick things on our API user. So I'm gonna log in as Foglight, and I'm gonna to go to my administration and users and security. 
Now I can either set up an API user, or in this case, I'm just doing it quickly to use Foglight. Now, the first thing I had to do with Foglight is I had to give Foglight the role called API access. So now he's allowed to come in and do API calls. But what I also did with Foglight is I went and I said, go ahead and set the auth token. So when I set the auth token, it's going to give me a token that I can use. So this way I don't have to pass my username and password into the script. I'm going to use the auth token instead. All right, so let's copy that auth token, that new one. And let's go back to Postman and put that auth token in to my login call. Now what we want is we want to use this auth token to go ahead and validate so that we can have a token that we can use for subsequent calls. Now, if I go ahead and send this, you'll see it returns back information about the user that I validated as. And here at the bottom, what we need is this token to go forward. Now, I'm going to use the same token everywhere. I'm going to use it in all my host calls and my alarms calls that I'm going to show you guys. So what I want to do is I want to go into my environment, my ECSM environment, and I'm going to go ahead and click on him. And I'm going to put my new token. This, this is good for 30 minutes. I'm going to paste this new token inside of my environment. So this way I can use it everywhere. All right, so now my environment's updated. I have a new auth token. So now if I go down to my all host call and I look at my parameters on my all host call, you'll see that my auth token has the new token value that I just entered in my environment. All right, so now if I run my, my all host call, it's going to pull back all of my information for my hosts. All right, so this is all my return information for those hosts. And if I go down and I, I run a have a single host here, I can copy that host value out of here and I can go into my memory utilization, for example, and I could paste that host inside of here. And then it'll be able to pull back information, more information um, on that single host when I send it. Okay, so now it's pulling information about the agent and different values that now I could start to use, whether I use them in another API or another application or insert them into a database, whatever the case may be. Um, now I could also go into my alarm history and you'll see the alarm history has the same thing, right? It's passing that token value into the alarm history. But now that I have that value, um, I have those parameters coded in there. I can go ahead and send it over and you can see I pull all my alarm data back. And right, now I wrote one down here and you can get pretty tricky with how you code some of these. There's, there's some different exclusions in here. So on this one, you'll see that I, I went in and I said exclude property patterns. So I don't want any properties here. I'm dot star is regex. I'm excluding everything, but I want to include a property uh, called unique ID. So in this case, what I wanted to do is I wanted to go to my host type and I wanted to pull out all the unique ID for the hosts so that I can use those in subsequent calls. So an example here is you might say, you might give them a host dropdown. So you want to pass all these in, in that API you're using. You want to pass all these host names. But what happens is once you put a host name in, the web page that you're putting it in understands that this is that ID for that host. So now that you have the ID, I can start doing queries on my observations for that host or other metric data. Okay. So that's an example. Now I did, this is DB backups and I have hosts in here. But I can also, instead of host, I could pull some different instances out as well. So one of the, um, let me just put one different one in here. So what I can do is I can do FSM service. I think that's, and then this is going to pull all my service data out. So I have two services called user one and user two, and these are the IDs for those services. I can also do database. I could put a database in there. I could whatever type I wanted, I can get all those type listings out. Now I'm going to end here for this first demo. One of the things I'm going to leave you with, what we're going to go into next, is you can actually run a script. So I can run a script that we wrote inside Foglight. I could write a Groovy script, and I can pass that Groovy script into my API call and return something back. So what we're going to do in the next demo is actually code this so that I can run a script called set blackout, and I'm actually going to blackout a host from a REST API call. Thank you very much for attending.